Okay, welcome to the topic on mathematical proof. Um, it's a really fundamental part of mathematics. It's not something that's given too much time in school mathematics these days. It used to be perhaps a bit more. But you'll have, if you've got to this stage, you will have had your teachers try and demonstrate when they introduce a, a formula or an idea. Very often they'll try to show you a kind of step-by-step -step, uh, breakdown as to maybe where it comes from. Uh, but there's a really big issue of uh, proof in terms of mathematical uh, building blocks and right back from the beginning of, of structured mathematics back to the likes of Euclid um, they determined that it'd be really important in order for any new mathematics to be true that it be based on other previous mathematical uh, axioms that were absolutely uh, definitely true in all situations so the idea of, of mathematical proof is to show that a statement is valid not just sometimes but all the time and that can be a really tricky thing to prove okay so there are different ways in which we can prove things uh, different techniques that we use uh, and of course sometimes things are not true and we can reveal the fact that maybe uh, something is false or not always true so here's uh, some of the things that we're going to cover in this uh, topic uh, first of all, a wee bit of uh, the idea of the structure of proof. So proof is a, a really important idea in, in mathematics. Um, you can have a formula. You can say, well, look, at this, this rule works pretty much every time I, I consider a situation. But unless you've considered every situation, it won't be accepted mathematically as a, a true thing. So how do we work uh, this idea that uh, something is true at all times without exception? First of all, let's have a look at uh, the structure of what a proof uh, might look like. Uh, the first thing we would have to do is to define things that maybe need def defining uh, so that we can be clear what it is we're trying to do. Uh, we've also got to come up with a conjecture. So that is something that... Um, a statement that we're wanting to try and show is true. We then try and come up with a, a some kind of structure, some kind of argument, logical argument, to show that the conjecture does actually work, and then we can it becomes a theorem or a rule once that's the case. Uh, so a, a definition, just to kind of recap, then uh, a precise meaning. So we've got to be really precise about what we are working with. So there's no ambiguity. Uh, there's no confusion. Um, conjecture will be something like a statement or proposition. Again, it has to be precise. It can't be wooly. It has to state what it states. Proof is our logical argument. Uh, proving the conjecture is true. And then the theorem uh, is a conjecture that is actually shown true. So what might that look like? Well, let's have uh, an example. It's very basic, but it, it uh, demonstrates it. So first of all, Here's a definition, a perfect square is any natural number which is the square of another natural number. Okay, now that's a very uh, specific definition which will become useful later on, and that's part of the issue of defining the perfect square is a natural number which is the square of another natural number. So the conjecture that I want to put forward is that 16 is a perfect square. Now notice that it doesn't have to be a question, uh, and in fact it, it's not really a question. We're not saying, is it a perfect square? We're actually making a statement. So a conjecture always sounds plausible. A state conjecture always sounds true because it's stated as a fact of truth. I could say 15 is a perfect square, which we know is not the case, but that would be my conjecture. Okay, so in this case, 16 is a perfect square is my conjecture. Is it true? Well, the, the logical argument, we're actually going to use the definition uh, for that. Okay, the logical argument is we know that uh, 4 is a natural number. And we know that 4 times 4 is 16. And 16 is a natural number. So by logic, we have applied the definition to our number 16, okay? We haven't needed to use algebra, we haven't needed to use a complex uh, strategy. We've simply broken down the definition of a perfect square 
and we've shown that the square root of 16 is a natural number. Uh, we've defined that also 16 is a natural number, and therefore, because our definition uh, is, is held or it meets the, the criteria here, therefore 16 is a perfect square, and our conjecture therefore is that 16 is a perfect square. Okay. Now notice that the conjecture and the theorem in this case are exactly true. So our conjecture, um, when it's proven true, can just be repeated. Uh, but of course, if the conjecture is false, then we have to deny it. Okay, so uh, here's a, a kind of basic idea of what we're doing. A conjecture is either true or untrue. Uh, if it's true, you're going to need to come up with a proof. And as we I showed on the first slide, here are some of the ways in which we can do it. We're going to have a look at most of these. Um, and then th the thing is, if it's not true, uh, then the good thing is we don't have to have a complex uh, disproof. We simply have to come up with one ex situation where the conjecture is not true. In other words, we provide one counter example and that's all you need one counter example uh, because therefore it's not true in all situations okay so that's the idea of a, a, a brief idea of, of proof there's one bit of definition one bit of extra thing i'm going to throw in just now and that are implication statements um, what are um, implication statements well it's it's, it's some <laughs> uh, some of you may have seen it or used it uh, unknowingly and because uh, it looks like a, a just a cool equal sign so I've got it in red an implication statement is an equal sign with uh, and usually has an arrow and some people use that as just an equal sign because they think it's just cool because it's got an arrow in it and I have to say to people no you can't actually use that because it has a specific definition so uh, when you put an arrow at the side of an equal sign you're saying this implies it it goes on it says for sure that this next thing is true as well. So implication means if one thing is true, then the other thing is also true. It's kind of two for the price of one. Okay. So in other words, uh, the statement here, if x equals 4, then x would equal 16. If you read that from left to right, if x is 4 is a given, okay, and if we, so if we're saying here, oops, wrong one, um, if we're saying that x equals 4 is true, then it's also a given that x squared equals 16, isn't it? There's absolutely no doubt that that's the case. So what we can do is write, because we've got the if then, we can replace that with an implication symbol. x equals 4, 4 implies that x squared equals 16. x equals 4 tells us that x, if, if that's true, then this is also true. So that's our implication we're basically saying the second one is true because the first one is true. Two for the price of one. Okay, so uh, you can actually go the other way uh, as well. You can have something which is implied by. Okay, so we could say here uh, that x plus two equals seven is implied by the fact that x would have to be equal to five. Okay, so in other words, the first statement here is the one that we may say that relies on the fact that x equals 5. It just depends on the order. But if you notice that the actual uh, kind of implication we've got there, or the, the converse, in actual fact, the first statement could imply the second. x plus 2 equals 7. If that's true, it implies that x equals 5, which brings into play uh, the, the, the last part, which is an equivalent statement, which is, um, the fact that sometimes you can have an arrow going both ways. In other words, one, either of the statements imply the other. Okay, That seems to be in a lot of situations kind of common sense. There's a lot of, especially linear algebra like that, where uh, when you write two statements, they're going to be equivalent. Okay, But in, in if you have a look at statement one, for instance, then that's not, let's go back to uh, this one here. Just get this, see this one here. X equals four implies x squared equals sixteen. It's quite clear that that's not reversible uh, because x squared equals sixteen. Does that imply that x equals four? Well, no, because x could be negative four. So 
sometimes equivalents uh, statements are equivalent and sometimes uh, they're not and if they are equivalent we there's, there's another mathematical uh, piece of jargon here if iff if and only if it means that two statements are equivalent it means that effectively they're reversible that one implies the other either way around so these little equivalent statements I, I use them in my proofs for specific reasons okay um, because sometimes we write stuff down from one line to the next and they're not necessarily arithmetically or algebraically equal uh, but we're talking about equivalent logic statements and so it's an it's it's good to be able to distinguish and not just stick equal signs down just for the sake of it okay that's just a wee bit of background about implication statements when we see these appear then that's what they're all about so we're going to go on and have a look at uh, different examples in the videos i hope this wee introduction has been uh, of use uh, to start off the topic and we'll get into examples of what proof actually looks like.